Dick, to start out, I want to ask you the same question we ask everybody here. How did you get into gyroplanes? Oh, a friend of mine saw a couple of engines that I had intended on using for a helicopter, and then I decided not to. He says, well, why don't we take these engines and build a couple of gyros? You furnish the engines, I'll furnish the parts, and that's the way it turned out. If it wasn't this one, it was a simple type gyro, but that was what really got me into gyroplanes. Now, you mentioned helicopters. I guess I should back up and what got you into helicopters? One day I decided I wanted to build something, maybe uh, a set of fans on a framework that would maybe fly over, over the fence or magic carpet or whatever. And my, one day my brother said, well, why don't you build a helicopter? So I gave it some thought and started thinking about the, the real process of building a helicopter, what helicopter, what design, and the likes. And then I settled on a certain design and started building it. It's a deep intermeshing two-rotor helicopter, which I finished in two and a half years. I received a grand champion rotorcraft at Oshkosh in it. I have 650 hours of flying time on it, and I still fly it. Well, this, that brings us to the Gyrino. Uh, if, this one? This one. You have blended some of the more interesting features of gyroplanes and helicopters in this machine. Tell us about the drivetrain and how you, you know, what makes it unique. Well, the drivetrain partly powers the rotor at all times. And in that feature helps to give it its jump takeoff qualities. Now, jump takeoff meaning that wherever it's sitting, as long as there's some kind of clearance around, It'll take off from right right here. Actually, I would have no problem right now taking off and climbing out uh, very strong. Okay, so you overspeed the blades with zero pitch and then dial pitch into them to, to do the jump, but you also maintain some percentage of engine power to the rotors. How do you get away with that without having some kind of torque compensation? Ah, yes. The rudder has enough authority to take care of the amount of torque that's put into the airframe. Now, another moment of freedom from Sirius Aircraft. Freedom through safety. Perhaps the ultimate freedom is confidence, assurance, and peace of mind. We design it into every personal aircraft we build. It's the security that comes with knowing you're flying the plane with a parachute. The breakthrough concept that launched the Cirrus phenomenon. Why a jump takeoff gyroplane? It, doesn't, ah. it seems to be a compromise most people don't go for. Okay, in 1993, at a fly-in very similar to this one, there was a, a contest that was announced for a jump takeoff gyroplane that to clear a 10-foot obstacle and run a 20-mile speed course with as little ground roll as possible, uh, as high as you can get over the 10-foot, but you had to get over the 10-foot even to qualify and fly a 20-mile speed course. I did some thinking about uh, the process. I had actually flown my helicopter to this event. My wife was with me and I was thinking and thinking and thinking on the way home and I turned to her and I said, I think I can do this. And she turns to me and says, why well, sure you can. What else do you need? Really? You know? So over uh, See, three months period of time, I had decided on how to build it. And this is the result of that. It took me a year and five months. The contest was held in Greencastle, Indiana, at a fly-in like this. I competed in that and I won the contest. Uh, the prize was $20,000, which partly paid for this. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's talk about how it's run since then. You, you're running uh, Subaru Power and a bunch of parts that that you've fabricated yourself, has it held up well? Well, absolutely it has. I thought it was gonna be a short-lived aircraft and the engine has not been apart since. I took the rotor head apart one time to inspect it. The entire system still works very great. You've fabricated components at the level of gears and differentials for this. Oh yes. How did you acquire that expertise and what do you do in your day job? 
Well, I work for my father-in-law in the motorcycle sales and service business. I've always been building little items from ever since I can remember. I've built little trinkets or knickknacks or little gizmos and widgets for my motorcycle to compete. And the people always, uh, as I was told later, said that uh, they always came to the events and uh, wanted to see what Dick had new. <laughs> so uh, building something, it, it was always in my blood. It's all self-taught. The machining is self-taught. Uh, I design in the entire rotor head system, the entire, tri the entire craft, and made all of the parts. Well, thanks for bringing it to Mentone. Let me ask you one final question. Why did you decide to build another one? My wife wanted to fly. <laughs> well, she's been flying for a long time. She's, uh, as, as both of us are, we're fixed wing uh, helicopter and gyroplane pilots. The beauty of the Release 9 system architecture is that you have two fully redundant integrated flight displays. Each has access to all the systems and data. Providing full redundancy and eliminating traditional reversionary modes, Release 9 allows either display to be configured as the PFD. Now your failure modes are much more manageable because you can continue to fly with the same familiar display symbology without the need to relearn composite modes you don't typically fly with. Avidyne's Integra Release 9 is truly the next generation in fully integrated flight deck technology. How did you get involved in flying or was it just a, was it, it Dick who got you involved or did you get involved before you guys met? Uh, my mom flew back in 1946 but I was too young to really know much about that and my husband did have a plane when we were first married and uh, after he saw it, I said, I think I wanted to fly, but I didn't say anything because he just, he just said so. it was his plane. He had just sold it. And I said, he said, okay, well, one day then we'll get another plane. So that's how it happened. All right. Now, fast forward to, to these very unique machines. Dick built you this one because you wanted to fly too. And now you're to the point in proficiency at it where you're doing spectacular jump takeoffs as a duet at air shows. What do you think of this kind of machine, and how did you become attracted to these things? Since my husband won the contest in 95 with the uh, jump takeoff contest for Poplar Aircraft Association, he had to have a trainer to start off with. And so he had his gyrino after, after the contest then. He, the trainer was not being used, so that meant I had one I could use for myself and take lessons. So I got into it that way. Tell us a little bit about the differences between Dick's original Gyrino and your machine. First of all, does yours have a funny name? Uh, mine is uh, D-Bird 2. Okay. Yeah, and uh, uh, he allowed me to name it, so it's uh, just something that I had thought up. But my uh, Gyro is so unique with the jump takeoff. I, I'm a very lucky person that my husband made one for me. <laughs> is there anything else that Dick's working on that you want to have one of too? Well, he's working on another jump gyro, and it'll be two-place. It'll probably be able to travel cross-country because it, uh, we have a 25-gallon gas tank in it. And uh, like my gyro here, for like an hour and a half flying here to Menton from home, it only uses it only uses seven and a half gallons. So literally, there, uh, and that's a Subaru engine, so very economical. Well, thanks for being such a good sport, and we really enjoy seeing you fly. Thank you.